Hi and welcome back to another video on Norse mythology. So the last video was about the Aesir and Vanir War, and this video is going to be about the tales of the Mead of Poetry and of the creation of Thor's hammer. So the tale of the Mead of Poetry kind of picks up where the Aesir and Vanir War left off. So if you'll remember, at the end of the Aesir and Vanir War, the two tribes, the Aesir and Vanir, spit into a cauldron and that created the being called Kavasir, or the wisest of all beings. So this tale begins with Kavasir, again a human who is the wisest of all beings. So because he was the wisest of all beings, he would travel around and answer every question he could, help anyone he could, and just generally give his counsel to everyone. One day he was invited to the home of two dwarves, Philar and Galar, meaning deceiver and screamer, and these two dwarves would be the ones who would slay him, and they would take his blood and brew a mead from it. The mead that they brewed had his wisdom within it, and they dispensed it into two crocs called Sun and Bowden, and a kettle whose name meant stir of inspiration. So those who drank the mead, because it had his wisdom within it, would become a scholar or a poet. When the gods eventually asked about Kavasir's disappearance, the deceitful little dwarves ended up telling them that Kavasir had died choking on his own wisdom. So this was not the last time that these dwarves would kill because they were not only very mischievous and liked causing trouble, but they just liked killing. So shortly after killing Kavasir, they ended up inviting a giant named Gilling to their home. So they took Gillian out to sea and drowned him. After tiring of hearing the weeping of his widowed wife, they then killed her by dropping a millstone over her head as she passed under the doorway of their house. So when Gillian sung Su Tung, meaning heavy with drink, heard of his father's murder, he took the dwarves out to low tide with the intention of drowning them when the tide would rise. However, the dwarves did not want to die. <laughs> so they pleaded for their lives and said that in exchange for their lives, they would offer up the mead that they had brewed from Kavasir's blood. Satang accepted this bargain and took the mead and stored it in a chamber within the mountain Nipjorg, meaning pulsing rock. He then gave the task of guarding the mead to his daughter, Gunlod. It wasn't long before Odin, lover of all things knowledge and wisdom, heard about this mead and decided that he had to have it. So what did he do? He disguised himself per usual. So this time he disguised himself as a farm hand and headed to Jotunheim to the farm of Boggy, who is Satang's brother. So as soon as he arrived, he came upon nine servants who were working the hay on a field. These servants were working with scythes. So Odin offered to sharpen the size of these nine servants using a whetstone that he pulled from his pocket. The servants agreed, and after having their size sharpened, they were amazed at how sharp they were and how much better they could cut the hay. So they were so amazed that they each wanted to buy the whetstone from Odin. Odin said he would sell them the whetstone, but that it would come at a high price. So what did he do? He threw the whetstone into the air, all nine servants went for it, and as they did, the sides of one another ended up beheading all of them. Therefore, there were no more servants, and Odin was the only one who remained. Odin then went to Boggy, and after introducing himself as Bulwark, or Worker of Misfortune, offered to do the work of the nine servants who had seemingly just killed themselves due to a dispute in the field. The payment demanded for this work would be a sip of Satang's mead, but Boggy admitted that he had no control over the mead. However, he did say that he would help Bulwark obtain his wish should he fulfill his promise of completing the work of the now deceased men. So the end of the working season came and Odin had successfully done his promise, but when they went to Satang and tried to retrieve his reward, Satang angrily refused. Boggy, after being reminded of his bargain with Odin, then agreed to help Odin gain entrance to Gunlod's home and in turn, the mead. So first they went to a part of the mountain that was closest to the chamber where the mead was kept. Here is where Boggy drilled a hole into the mountain using an auger that Odin had provided him. He eventually announced that he was done, but 
After Odin blew in the hole and dust returned back to him, he demanded that Bogi then finish the job because it obviously wasn't done. Finally, after announcing a second time that he was done, Odin then blew through the hole again, and this time it blew through to the other side. So he promptly shifted into the shape of a snake and slithered right through the hole before Bogi could stab him with the augers to prevent him from going through. Once through the hole, he again shifted, this time into the shape of a handsome man, and he used this to win Gunlot over and secure a promise that if he would sleep with her for three nights, she would allow him three sips of the mead. When Odin went to the mead after the third night of sleeping with her and was allowed that one sip, he instead drank all of the mead from all of the containers in one big gulp each. He then shifted into the shape of an eagle and took off toward Asgard. Upon discovering what Odin had done, Satan himself also shifted into the shape of an eagle and flew off after Odin toward Asgard. So the gods spotted Odin making his approach, and they saw that Suttung was close behind him, so they decided that they needed to attack. However, upon seeing this, Suttung decided to retreat. So upon re-entering Asgard, Odin regurgitated the mead that he had been holding in his throat into containers. When he did so, a few drops are said to have spilled onto Midgard. These drops are said to be the source of all bad and or mediocre poets and scholars. The true scholars and poets are the ones to whom Odin dispenses the mead. So that was the tale of the Mead of Poetry, and it is just the first of a few tales involving Odin, showing us just how far he'll go in order to obtain wisdom and knowledge. So now we're going to switch gears and talk about the creation of Thor's hammer. So this tale starts when Loki, being mischievous, one day got bored and decided the best thing to cure his boredom would be to cut off all of the nice, beautiful, golden hair of Sif. Sif is the husband of Thor, and when he heard of this, he rightfully wanted to break Loki's neck. In exchange for his safety, however, Loki begged to go to the home of the dwarves and obtain a new head of hair for Sif. Upon arrival, Loki not only obtained a new head of hair for Sif, which was crafted by the sons of Avaldi the dwarf, but two other wonders, Skioblinir and Gungir. If you'll remember, Skioblinir is the magic ship that has favorable winds and can be folded down to pocket-sized. Gungir is the deadliest of all the spears. In true Loki fashion, despite having completed all his tasks, he still wanted to create more trouble. So he then approached Boker and Sindri and told them that they could never create three new wonders equal to those that of all these sons had created, the new head of hair, Skleobanir, and Gungir. He bet his head that they couldn't do it, and then the brothers took the bait and agreed. As the two brothers worked, Loki disguised himself as a fly in an attempt to ruin the creations. So first, he stung Sindri's hand as he was pulling the first creation out of the fire. This first creation would end up being Gienborsti, meaning golden bristled, and was a live boar with golden hair who was fluorescent and could run unmatched. He next stung Boker on the neck, and the second creation was withdrawn. This creation would be called Dropnir, meaning dripper. Dropnir was a ring from which eight new golden rings of equal weight would fall from every ninth night. Finally, on their last creation, Sindri stressed to Boker how important it was to stay focused as a mistake could easily happen. However, Loki again stung Boker's eyelid, causing blood to block his vision. Despite this, Sindri withdrew the last creation, a hammer of the highest quality that always hit its mark and always returned to its owner. The one flaw of the hammer, which would come to be called Molnir, was the short handle. The two brothers made their way to Asgard shortly after Loki made his way back with the new creations. So to Thor, he gave the new head of hair for Sif and Molnir. To Odin, he gave Dropnir and Gungir. And to Freyr, he gave Skioblinir and Gioborsti. The gods were grateful for their gifts and therefore concluded that Loki still owed his end of the bargain, which was his head. However, Loki being Loki found a way out of this. So, as the dwarves approached him with knives, ready to take his head, Loki reminded him that he promised only his head and not his neck. 
So the dwarves instead sewed Loki's mouth shut and returned home. So with that ends the tale of the creation of Thor's hammer, and we also had the opportunity to learn about a few more objects that we learn of throughout the tales and when we're talking about the gods. So Draupnir, Giamborsti, Skiobanir, and even the spear that was thrown during the Aesir-Vanir War. So we still have several tales to go, and the next video is going to be focused on the fortification of Asgard. So I'll see you then. La 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 la.